Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty and fashion trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Welcome to the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Colleen, and let's just get into some beauty tips. So, I wanted to talk about some mistakes that you might be making makeup-wise that are actually aging you. Now, this is not just for our lovely older ladies, but for our younger ladies as well, and men. What am I talking about? It's for everybody. These, These are just tips and things that I find that people are doing that are really aging them makeup wise things that if you are older or younger mostly if you are older these things are definitely something you should avoid but also if you're younger these are things you should just be pretty weary on because they could also age you now let's start with the base foundation too much foundation. Now, I've talked about this a million times, but overdoing it on the foundation can really age you. The cakiness can age you. Also, powder. Like, overdoing the powder on top of the foundation can age you so much because it it does look powdery. It might look phenomenal in your photos, but it does look powdery. And if you are older and you put all this powder on, it is going to sink within those fine lines and kind of show those off a little more than you would like them to be shown. Just tip tip, stick a little closer to just cream products in general. Creamier products will help. If you are on the oilier side, powder can help. Just don't overdo the powder because if you overdo the powder, it's definitely going to show. It's going to show and you are not going to be a happy person. (laughs) So let's move on to concealer, which is also part of our base. Um, this, This one I see a lot. This one I've had issues with in the past and I do everything in my power to try to to avoid, and that's caked on concealer. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you yourself are caking on the concealer, but if if you put on too much concealer or concealer that's going to be too drying for the under eyes, it is going to settle in all those fine lines. Now, you can add powder on top of that to counteract, but if you are older then that's not going to help at all. That's going to make it worse. It's really going to sink into those lines and you're going to see it and your under eyes are going to look like crepes. I do love a good crepe, but I do not love a good crepe under the eye. <laughs> Just saying. Um, it all goes back to the, you know, creamier, the better. I would definitely stick with something that's going to work with your skin type. That's that's a big thing because most of the time you're just like, oh, this concealer will be fine or oh, these people like this concealer, so I'll use it. And a lot of times these full coverage concealers, I would definitely stay away from full cover- coverage concealers. Um, they do look pretty cakey underneath because they're just trying to hide everything, but it's not hiding everything. It's actually emphasi- emphasizing 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 I can word today it's fine but it's actually emphasizing good gosh it's actually emphasizing those lines underneath your eyes and it does look cakey and if you've got a really good base going and if you do do your concealer on top of your foundation um, if you have a really nice base going then that's going to kind of throw everything off um to, to keep on the concealer train while we're here um 
besides going for something that's going to work the best with your skin type, don't go too light on the concealer because that can also age you. A little lighter than your foundation shade or your natural skin tone will is is always nice and will be fine, but if you go too lighter, it's very obvious on top of it and it really can emphasize everything you don't want to be emphasized. You want to conceal those dark circles before, you know, doing everything everything else. One thing that I would recommend doing if you are a little older and have more mature skin would be if you're going to do concealer to do it underneath your foundation instead of on top. If you do it on top, a lot of times it can just stick out and that's not what you want. You want something that's going to be, you know, it's going to conceal. It's going to be undercover. And that's really, you know, that's really the big point I want to hit home with that. (laughs) So let's move on to something else for your face, which is skin primers. If you have more mature skin, go for a skin primer. You might think, oh, I don't need this, you know, like I, it's not something for me, but it is. It is something that can be really essential and can also protect your skin from whatever you're putting on top of it. So I definitely recommend going with a primer. If you're not sure what kind of primer to go with, talk to somebody. Go into your local makeup store or counter or what have you and ask somebody because they should be able to direct you in the right direction um, to what's going to work the best for your skin because, you know, you should you should use it. Probably nothing silicone and more on the moisturizing side. I would definitely go with that. You could also just do moisturizer underneath. Just be wary not to put too much on because that can also affect what you're putting on top of it. it. Primers, they don't seem essential, but they are. Let's move back into foundation and talk about foundation color. Now, this is something that people do a lot of time unintentionally. And it's not your fault if you do. I've done it before. And that's when your foundation shade does not match your skin tone. It's a little lighter or a little darker. Now, this can actually aid you because it kind of shows off that you're not wearing the proper color and it looks, it starts to look like a mask. It starts to look like something that's not a part of you, if that makes sense. It looks painted on. That's what I'm going for. But it does look, it it can look very painted on and that's not something you want. What you want is to have, you know, you want a flawless base. You want to go light and thin layers. Light, thin layers. I'm going to say that in almost every podcast. (laughs) Let me tell you, especially when you're coming uh, with mature skin to makeup is light, thin layers. And if you've got mature skin, the good thing to like to start with is, is to focus the majority on the middle of the face and not so much on the outside of the face. So if you're working a foundation in, start t-zone your mid mid part of your face around your nose and then work outwards don't put it everywhere don't anything work in to out and that will help and if you're blending things outwards you actually don't need product so far back when it comes to that this will just help light thin layers help starting with your concealer underneath helps and sometimes you know Just going with concealer can help, but that's when you need to go with a a shade that is your skin tone. That is something that you should do if you're going to go without, you know, without foundation. But I would suggest for somebody with more mature skin to go with a foundation, but don't go with a full coverage. Go with something very light, something that you can work in thin light layers and build up to a coverage that is good enough for you that is not to the point where it's sinking in your lines, sinking in all your fine lines or what have you, and just kind of aging you. I really, (laughs) I really want to hit home forever in every podcast that I ever make is just light, thin layers. Because this especially will help you if you have mature skin. This is definitely something that you want to pay attention to you. Now, You may be asking your, I don't know, friends or child or whatever, if you are of an older age, of what to do. And they might be like dotting it all over their face and then just, you know, like using this and using that. Just be weary that sometimes things that are working for somebody with a younger skin will 
not work for you. Now, <laughs> let's take a quick break. And when I come back, let's talk about some more things that are aging you instead of helping you. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking beauty tips. Who oh, fancy that? But we were talking tips for more mature skin and not just more mature skin, but things that are making you, that are aging you, that you're doing in your beauty routine. Now, we just talked about more base related stuff. Let's move on to eyebrows. Now, this is something that people don't think is aging them, but it really is. And that is your eyebrows. So if you're older, more mature, then I would stick with filling your eyebrows in with a pencil or using a tinted brow gel. Now, this is really going to help your eyebrows just look a little fuller and more natural. Now, I'd stay away from using uh, brow powders because like I said in the beginning, powders are not going to help you when it comes to aging skin or just aging looking older. Now, the whole thing with the powder in the eyebrows is a lot of times it looks like powder. And when you've got more mature skin, um, the powder is going to really look like powder on those areas that are sparse within your eyebrows. Definitely use a, an, a pencil or a tinted brow gel. Now, I recommend a tinted brow gel because it's easy. If you've got a little bit more sparse sparse areas, then definitely go for that pencil. But I definitely think a tinted brow gel is the best. You can co combine the two and that's one of the best ways to do it. My mother, she actually, I turned her on to a tinted brow gel and she likes that a lot. And she's used pencils too, but I think the tinted brow gel works the best, at least for her. Now let's talk about brow pomades. Brow pomades can be great. They really can be great and they can really help fill in your eyebrows, especially when you're, you don't, when you've got younger skin. Now, if, even if you have younger skin, when you're doing that full Instagram brow, that real thick brow, it does age you. It, it really does. Trying to mimic, uh, hairs is probably your best bet and going very light handed with the pomade in your eyebrows in the first place is really going to help. Um, if you're, if you're doing that, you're just kind of filling in with your brow pomade. Excuse me. Ooh. <laughs> if you're, if you're lightly filling in with your brow pomade and you're not drawing the, the strokes, then I would definitely anyway take a spoolie. But one thing that can help is to take a spoolie afterwards to disperse the product properly. And a lot of times using the spoolie with the pomade once you've done that can really help, um, mimic some brow hairs as well. I, this is something I can't stress enough when it comes to eyebrows. Just don't fill them in like blocks. It really does age you. I know a lot of people who do their eyebrows this way and yeah, it might look good on some people, but a lot of times in person, it ages you. In photos, it looks great, but in person, it really, really does age you. Now let's move on to eyeshadow. Eyeshadow is fine. I mean, you can do whatever you want when it comes to eyeshadow. You really can. There are no rules, but if you're 
have more mature skin, you're a little bit older, and you're going for that crazy bright colored eyeshadow, it is going to sort of age you. Now, if you're younger, you can pretty much get away with whatever you want. And even when you are older, you can get away with it. Don't let me deter you from trying all different types of eyeshadow. Don't let me deter you from that. But it can age you when it comes to the brighter and the sparklier and the more in-your-face eyeshadows. One thing that I recommend eyeshadow-wise would definitely be just a cream shadow. A nice little cream shadow that you could just put on real quick blend out a little bit and you're just golden. That's one of the best things to do. Even going eyeshadowless is good too, but I definitely would go with either more neutral tones or cream eyeshadows. That would be great. Once again, on the creams, <laughs> this whole thing is going to be about like cream products, but um, a cream eyeshadow will also help with aging skin with your eyelids because your eyelids is a, are very, very, very thin. They're very thin, and a lot of times if you're putting powder on the eyelids with more mature, I guess more mature eyelids, <laughs> it, it can kind of show some wrinkles, a little bit of fine lines in there. And one way to combat that is to use an eyeshadow primer, and it can help. But I definitely think just using a cream shadow is one of your absolute best bets when it comes to this. Cream shadows are easy. They take two seconds to apply. You really don't need much time. You can even blend out with your finger. And this is something that I recommend to almost everybody because they're fun. You can also add colors on top of that and that can help too. If you put down a cream shadow and add a little powder on top of it, it can help and not show those like fine lines. It's kind of like a base, a good base for that. Now, once again, try whatever you want with eyeshadow. It's That's the fun part. That's the part where you can really go ham. You can really go overboard with it. You can just, I don't know, you can do whatever you want. Like there are no rules. But eyeshadow can be an issue. <laughs> It can. And I definitely recommend something that's going to blend very easily because a lot of times if you have a muddy eyeshadow look, it's just real muddy, not very blended together, kind of just mishmashing in a weird way. That can also age you. And that's not what you want. You want something nice and blended, nice and simple, nice and good looking, and that's the way to do it. Now sticking with eyes. Let's talk mascara. Now this is something I see a lot and it, it always bothers me and people think I'm a little extra with the way that I do my um, eye, uh, my, my mascara, but it's there's a reason that I do it the way that I do it. So when you're doing mascara, I see this all the time, just the clumping of the mascara, the multiple layers of the clumping of the mascara, that can really age you. You don't think it does, but it can really age you. So the one thing that I recommend, the thing that I do every time I'm doing myself or a client or something like that is put the mascara on and before it dries, take a clean spoolie or a spoolie that you've named only for mascara and run it through your eyelashes to really separate out those clumps. Trust me, it'll help. Or getting a mascara that's not going to give you a lot of clumps and not going in so many layers. When you go layer after layer after layer after layer, it really shows. It does. And it draws attention to the eye in a negative way. No matter what your eyeshadow looks like or anything along those lines, it just draws this attention that is not the type of attention that I like and not the type of attention that you really want because all they see are the spider lashes. That's all they see. And really, 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 really try this. <laughs> like for real. If you've never tried this and you're like, maybe, maybe not, maybe I'll try it. Just take a spoolie and run it through and see the difference. And the good thing with the spoolie too is you can do that. And if you're noticing, you know, you like the way it's looking, but you need a little more, you can add more. You can add more without, you know, adding the clumpiness because you are taking off a little bit of the mascara, just a little bit, not a lot, when you're using that spoolie brush, but then you can add a layer on and do the same thing once again and it's going to mesh together in a better way than just clumping together and giving you that 
spider eye. Ain't nobody want a spider eye. Let's just talk about that. I mean, some people love that clumpy look, but I really do think that it ages you. It really, really does, and I can't stress that enough. So just spoolies. Keep them in hand. You can get them at like Sally's Beauty Supply. You can get a package of spoolies for super cheap. Sephora has spoolies. You can get spoolies everywhere. Just a little disposable ones, or you can have like a spoolie brush like one that's for eyebrows and just use that. Sometimes that's what I do. I have one that's specifically for that, but I also have the disposable ones and those are the best. I I don't know. Disposable everything is great. (laughs) Before I keep telling you about disposable spoolies, let's take a quick break and I'll come back with some more tips on how not to age yourself. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about tips that will help to not age you, whether you have mature skin or younger skin, just things that you're doing that are aging you and how you can change that. Now, we were talking about eye stuff, eye things, eye things you're doing wrong and eye things you could do better. Now, (laughs) let's talk about one more eye product, and then move on to some more face products. So this is one thing that is something that a lot of people do that I see that can be a mishap, and that's eyeliner. So when you're going, a lot of people with mature skin will go for just eyeliner, and that's so good. It's fine, but just be careful that your eyeliner is symmetrical because that can really throw off your eye shape, especially if you're not wearing any sort of eyeshadow. Um, if you're going to do a line across, try and get them as close as possible. I know it's basically impossible to get a perfect line on both sides. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but if, you know, try and get them as even as possible. And if you've got a little higher on one side in one area, you're either remove it or do the same on the other because it will throw off your eye shape and that can make you look a lot older. Now, besides that, black eyeliner is great. Don't get me wrong. But putting black eyeliner in the in the bottom, in your waterline, not the top waterline, the bottom waterline, um, can really age you as well. Now, if, if you're doing this with a whole smoky eye look, it's fine. This is going to close off your eyes a lot and, you know, make your eyes look smaller, but it, it can look good. Now, the problem is just doing that and leaving that. That, that looks, it can really age you. Like, it can so age you. And on top of that, just putting on bottom eyeliner and nothing else will really age you. Whether it's just on your waterline or even below. It's, it's gonna kind of, so it'll age you in a weird way. So it will make you look like a teenager who's just got makeup for the first time. Um, but 
it's not going to make your face turn into that teenage face that you're looking for. It's just going to kind of droop down the eye and really not help you in any aspect whatsoever. Also, brown eyeliner is fantastic. Nobody talks about it. It's always black eyeliner this, black eyeliner that. Branch out into some brown eyeliner. It's just, it's a good idea, I'm telling you. Also, using a lighter color in your waterline can really help to brighten the eye and open the eye up a lot more. It's kind of that opposite factor of where you put the black eyeliner in, it's going to close off that eye, but you put the light color eyeliner in, it's really going to open that up and help you out. Now, let's move away from the eyes and go back to the face, and let's talk about blush. Now, blush is important. Blush can really give you a youthful glow when it comes to having more mature skin and just being a little more mature and trying to figure out what you're, you know, what to do. Adding a little bit of blush is good. Do not go overboard with the blush. Nobody wants that big streak of blush on their face. That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for a little blush to add a little bit of flush and a little bit of youth into your look. This can really help add that, like, plump youthful factor. Trust me, it's it's top tier. This is something that will really help you if you're not doing it already. Now, besides blush, you've got highlighting and contouring. If you are more mature, you can still highlight and contour. That's totally fine. Do it up. Some people feel like it's not for them. You know, my I know people and my family members, they don't do it, and that's okay. It's not for them. But if you feel like you want to enhance those cheekbones a little bit or whatnot, you can do it. But use cream products, once again, and very, very, very lightly. Now, I've said this before. I do contour, and when I do, it's so light and in such a small little area because I don't want too much. I don't want people to know that I've contoured. I want them to see the shadow within my face without thinking, oh, you put on makeup for that. Just a little bit can go a long way and try and steer clear of those powders again because they can emphasize that texture. Now, in talking about emphasizing texture, highlighting. I love a good highlight. It can really help with the glowy skin and oh, I love highlight. I do. And most people do, but you can go overboard and it'll age you. You don't think it'll age you because, oh, it's highlight, you know, but it can. Now, a powdered highlight, I even stay away most of the time from powdered highlights because they really emphasize the glitter and the shininess in them really emphasize the texture in your skin. Now, if you're going for a highlight, I would use a cream highlight, number one. Something that's going to look more on the dewy side and not so much on the glittery side. Just a nice cream highlight. Or probably stay away from like a glitter stick, unless that's what you're going for. Like if you really want a glitter cheek, then go for it. But the, those little flecks of glitter really kind of show off the texture in your skin. And when you're using a powder highlight... Um, and you're putting it on that area, that area is textured. You might not think so, but it is textured, and once you put on that powdered highlight, you'll know. It's just, the shininess really shows it off, and that can so, that can really age you. It can age you so much. My favorite highlight, I've talked about this in my last podcast, and I think even in the one before, is Max Cream Color Base in Pearl. Now, these I like so much because they're very creamy. You, you like, a little bit is all you need, and it's not this beaming. It's more of a glow within. And if you've got more mature skin or you're looking just to look more youthful, then that's the kind of thing you want is that glowing from within, not sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Now, I like this one specifically because the color's great, but on top of that, it's just... The texture's good, and I can build it up. Now, now once again, this is, the th this is those light, thin layers. And this goes for everything that I've talked about, is light, thin layers. When you're doing a highlight, don't go overboard. Go with those light, little, thin layers. And it can help you out so much to the nth degree, for real. 
And especially when it comes to highlight, even if you're going to go and use a powder highlight, just a little bit can go a long way. And it can really enhance a look without being too much. And that's the last thing you want is just to look too much or to look too old. You don't want to make yourself look older than you are. That's just, nobody wants to. We're putting on makeup to look stunning because we think we look stunning and I, you know, that's, that's why everybody does it. You do it for yourself. You don't do it for no one else. You know this. But, you know, you, you just don't want to make yourself look older than, you know, than you are. Younger is fine. Older? I don't know. <laughs> so let's take a quick break. And when I come back, we'll talk about some more tips and tricks to make sure you're not aging yourself. You want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about mistakes you're making to that are aging yourself beauty-wise and the tips that you can use to fix these mistakes. Now, we just talked about contour, highlighting, also eyeliner. Let's move away from that and move to the lips. Now, you can be pretty lenient when it comes to your lips. Um, if you're more mature, I would probably stay away from a liquid lip because they can be so drying. And I mean, there are some that aren't drying, but these can really emphasize lines. And this is what we're trying to get rid of in this entire podcast is emphasizing those lines. We do not want to do that. Like that's the last thing we want to do. It really ages you. So I would stay away from that and stick to your normal lipstick. Now, I would also go with a lipstick that's not super sparkly. I mean, you can go with the sparkle lipstick. I mean, do you? But this can also be kind of aging if you've got this weird metallic or sparkly lipstick on. It it can look really aging. I do find that metallic lipsticks in general are aging. Um, even, you know, when I wear them, when I've seen people wearing them, it's just because that glitter just hangs in the weirdest spots in your lips. Like, let me tell you, it just sits in the weirdest spots. Now, one thing that I see a lot too is overdoing the lip liner. (laughs) Don't overdo the lip liner. This can, this can really age you and also sometimes give you a mustache and that's not what you want. Now, when you're going to line your lips, I would follow the natural shape of your lip if you want a little bit more and enf- like a little bit more lip, you can overline, but if you're a little more on the mature side, I would stay away from overlining your lips because it can be really noticeable. Now, if you are going to overline your, li- your lips, you want to overline more the middle and then go back into your normal shape as you go out towards the ends of your mouth. But when you're doing this on uh, on somebody who's got a little more mature skin, it can stand out a lot more than on somebody with younger skin. Because once again, those lines that can go into those lines that are on your lip that everybody has. Don't deny it. You have it. I have it. And it'll kind of sink in there and give you a weirder shape than what you're actually looking for. So just overline your lips or line your lips, sorry, normally. <laughs> And put your lipstick on from there. Now, try and match your lipstick to your lip liner. Don't go for the super dark lip liner with the light lipstick. Don't do it. That definitely is going to age you. I mean, you can blend it in. And I mean, if you're younger, a lot of times, once again, you can get away with this. But you, 
but it, you know, just, it will age you. It will. And sometimes it'll give you a mustache and that's not what you want. You, you, I mean, everybody's got a mustache. I got a mustache. You got a mustache. Everyone's got a mustache. But this can really kind of give you that mustache that you're not looking for. Also, lining your lips in general is a good idea because lipstick does bleed. Now, I've had some lipsticks that don't bleed. And those are great. But lipsticks do bleed and you can't really tell if it's going to or not. It just does. So lining your lips can really help control that bleeding throughout the day. And you're not that person at your lunch or your brunch or your dinner or whatever that's got lipstick all over their mouth. Like that, that can also really age you. Because I do see a lot of more mature people who have you know, th been throughout their day with their lipstick reapplying and whatnot, and it is bleeding. And they just kind of go with it because that's what they've done. Really line your lips and it will help, I promise you. Also, with lip color, I'd go for more neutral colors or reds. Reds are great. I just, I love a good red. But a darker lip can age you. Now, this is more, once again, for people that are a little more mature. Younger people can usually get away with a dark lip liner or a blue lip li or lipstick or whatnot, and it's fine. But if you're a little more mature and you're wearing these darker lip colors, it is going to age you. Something that's too brown is going to... It, it just looks a little weird. It looks a little strange and it makes you look a little older and that's not what you want you want. So I'd go with more mauve tones or or neutral tones or you know even reds. Like I said and I will say a million a thousand so many so many times on this podcast is a red looks good on everyone. Now when you're going for a red and you're a little more mature be weary because there are some really deep reds that you, like more on the burgundy side that you want to stay away from. I'd go with your more true classic red or your blue red. Not so much. Or like even orange red. Orange red is probably one of the best. But I would not go so much for like a burgundy color or something that's a deeper red. I would try and stay as far away from that. Also, lip gloss is fun. You can do a lip gloss. Lip gloss is fun. But once again, I'd stay away from lip gloss with glitter. That's just a thing. Also, I'd probably just stay away from lip gloss altogether <laughs> if you're wearing a normal lipstick. Because that can smudge it around and that can actually kind of move your lipstick around more than you would like. And if you're not lining your lips and you're going out and you're doing your... Um, regular lipstick and then you put a lip gloss on top of that that can kind of ruin that barrier that you've created between your skin and lips and it can go and bleed once again. Honestly, it's it's all up to you. It's always up to you. Makeup is relative and 100% up to you all the time. There's never a point where it's not up to you. Just remember this. Remember that it's always up to you and it's okay to branch out. But these are just some things that I'm I've noticed and I know can really age people pretty much no matter what age you are. These are just things that if you are on the more mature side that I would watch out for more than if you are on the younger side. I just I thought you guys like to know that. <laughs> For real, these are helpful tips. These are tips that I use in my everyday and I, I use on not only myself, but I would use on clients as well. Just something to be weary of. And also, if, you're, if your mom or your grandma or your, I don't know, anybody who is older than you are asking questions about makeup, these this will help you give some tips that can really help them out in the long run. Because our, if I do an Instagram model makeup on my mother or my aunt or something like that, then it's not going to look the same. It's really going to age them. And it's not going to be something that's going to be flattering like it would be flattering on me or my sister or something like that. That's just kind of how it goes. Is As you age, you need to change things 
in your beauty routine for that and not just not only with skincare and whatnot but also with your makeup it it really is something you kind of have to continue to go through and kind of change up as you get older i've changed mine up i'm not very old but <laughs> i've changed my makeup up from when i've been doing it to now and have noticed things that have made me look older or you know just feel older when i'm looking at myself and that are aging me and realizing things that'll help me kind of take it back to more of a youthful look. Now, I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, let's talk about some more beauty tips. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about mistakes that people make that are aging them beauty-wise. Now, we were talking primarily makeup. Now, I want to move to fashion. I thought we'd take a little break from makeup for a minute and talk about fashion that's aging you. Now, this is relative, obviously, because fashion is ever-changing, and sometimes literal garbage can be fashion, so... <laughs> I mean, with all of this, you can take it with a grain of salt because it's all relative. Beauty is up to you. Beauty is in the heart of the beholder. I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so the first clothing that I would say is definitely aging is baggy clothes. Now, I see this a lot on me because I am a very small person and just baggy clothes in general makes me look like I'm being swallowed, but it can give you that appearance of older, especially baggy pants, I find, are definitely something that can make you look a lot older. Also, I would say over accessorizing. Now, this is something that when I was doing my research on this, besides the fact of what I, you know, my personal opinions on this, um, I realized that over accessorizing is actually done by a lot of more mature people. My Nana does it. Like, she over accessorizes big, big, chunky stuff. But the thing is, it can make you look older. So just keep that in mind when you're over accessorizing. Also, over accessorizing in the now in this brand new 2020, huh? Happy New Year to you. But in the now is definitely too much because right now it's all about minimal. Minimal this, minimal that. I mean, it's the beginning of the year, so it might very well change. But over accessorizing can make it, it make you look really crowded and it can make you look older. So just go with a little bit of light accessori accessorizing. Words, I'm telling you. Slowly by the end of this, I won't even be speaking English anymore. <laughs> so another thing is mini skirts. If you're more mature or just in general, mini skirts can make you look older. If I were a mini skirt, I'm a small person, so usually it's not very much a mini skirt on me. But um, if I wear a mini skirt... I still look a little too old for it. And I'm not that old. I just think it's how it works. I don't know. There's something about the mini skirt that definitely makes you look older and not in a flattering way. Now, with with mini skirts, let's talk about dressing too young. This is so possible. There are a lot of things that you 
see that are popular to wear, or popular to do this because everyone's wearing it, but you can dress too young. I find there's a lot of things that I can't even wear because it's just too young for me. That's just how it goes throughout life. Just it's important. Another just tip in general is it is important to keep up with what's fashionable and, you know, constantly kind of change things to your personal liking, but also what is fashionable within the time. But be weary. Be weary of what is going to be okay for you or what is going to be too young or even too old looking. There are a lot of things that will make you look pretty old and I would stay away from those. And on the same note, there are a lot of things that I notice that will make you look like you're trying too hard. And I mean, that's possible with anything that you decide you want to try and wear. Don't get me wrong. It's just... I'm just saying keep up with the times, but be careful because there are a lot of things that'll make you look like you're just real trying to be young and that actually makes you look older by doing that. Just a personal thing. I don't know. That's completely up to you, but it is important to keep up with trends. Just don't go too much. Don't, don't, go too trendy. Keep up with what's trending, but don't go full trendy. And if you're older, it can, like I said, it can really make you look like you're trying too hard. Now, hold, along the lines of this, holding on to the past is a big thing too. It, you might have a million pieces of clothes from way back when, or you find a bunch of clothes from way back when, and man, it felt so good when you wore those and you try it again and it's just not working on you. And it's just not working on you because you've grown out of it. It's not the size thing. I mean, it might be a size thing, but we'll talk about that later. But it's just, it's a trend thing. I hate that. I hate the fact that everything has to be via a trend, but that's just how it works. That's honestly just how it works. It, no matter where, whether you think you're going by a tr by the trend or not, it. I mean, if you look back at pictures from 60s, 70s, 80s, everybody wore a similar thing, but nobody was trying to go by the trend. It just happened that way, and that's how it goes. So just kind of keep up on what people are wearing. Doesn't have to be what's super trendy right now, but just keep up on what people are wearing and put what you were wearing in the past. Leave it back there. It might come back, but it still might not be for you. That's just, that's just how it goes. Fashion's weird. Um, fashion's really weird. I, it's forever changing and also forever over the top for no reason. <laughs> but <laughs> along the lines of like, dressing too young and all of that. Another thing to stay away from is glitter. Glitter and like big chunky sequins and stuff like it's just gonna, it's gonna age you so much. Go for more of a sleek thing or if you want a, a, a somewhat shiny outfit, go for more of a, a satin finish than an actual like sparkly, shiny, shiny finish. Because it will age you and you will look like you're trying, you're cosplaying as a 13 year old. That's just how it goes. <laughs> stay away from glitter. Stay away from glitter. My big thing here is just to kind of keep up. That's, that's really what this whole thing is when it comes to dressing and not looking too old is keep up with trends but be careful be careful of things that are too baggy things that are just too young looking it's just it's kind of the theme here you you want to dress appropriate for your age sometimes it's hard and that's why your best bet is to just look at what's somewhat trending especially among people of your age group that's just how it goes um Stay away from short things. We should just, I was going to say just the mini skirt thing, but the more I think about it, the more I would just say to stay away from very short things. Depending on your age, it's, it's still like it can age you so rapidly, especially if you are a little bit more mature, um, then I would stay away from two short skirts or shorts or something like that because it will age you and you'll see it. 
it can be difficult at times, especially when I'm saying things like this, like stay away from this and stay away from that and all this, because you you might like a lot of the stuff that you wear and then suddenly think that, oh, she said that I shouldn't because it's aging me. It's, it's relative to people, but I'm giving you advice from what I think can help. But you don't have to take it. Like I said, beauty is relative. Beauty is whatever you want it to be. That's just how that goes. Beauty is for for you, for no one else but for you. So whatever you want to wear, you can wear. These will just help you, let's say, in a more professional standpoint. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk a few more things to help you with that possible aging mistake you're making. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about some fashion mistakes that you might be making that are aging you and some tips on how to fix that. Now, let's talk a few more fashion tips. Now, I would have put these with the last ones, but I feel like these all kind of go together. So what I'm talking about is not dressing for your shape, wearing the wrong size and wearing shapeless things. Now, not only is this an aging thing, this can be for anybody. This is really something that we should all think about in general. Um, Dressing for your shape is really important because if you don't dress for your shape, you can either look frumpy or you can even look like you're wearing the wrong size when you're not. So figure out what looks best on you and what looks best on people with your same body shape. I mean, nobody looks like you, so it's up to you to figure that out. Now, wearing the wrong size is an issue. I see this so much when I'm everywhere, and most of the time what I see is wearing things that are too tight. Now, if you're more mature, wearing things that are too tight are definitely going to age you. It's very much going to age you. You're going to look like a sausage stuffed in a casing that's just too small. (laughs) And plus, you're going to be so uncomfortable. Wear something your size. Now, this goes almost the same in the opposite spectrum of things. I wear things that are too big, but those are mostly t-shirts and whatnot. And yes, they do age me. I do kind of look like a nut when I'm in a t-shirt that goes down to my knees, for real. But it's comfortable. I mean, I think you can do that, but if you're looking for something that's not going to age you, go for something that's going to fit your size. Don't go for something that's going to be too big or too small. We talked about baggy clothes um, before the break, and when it comes to this dressing for your shape, baggy clothes... Oh, I'm burping a lot. (laughs) But baggy clothes um, are going to age you. They are. And they're going to swallow you. And that's just what happens. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm a very small person. And everything baggy just swallows me whole. I am a pile of laundry is what it looks like. So moving from that, let's talk about shapeless. Now, if you're more mature, you definitely want to wear something that's going to fit you and or give you an illusion of some curves or whatnot. Something that's going to give you some shape. You don't want to wear something straight because you're going to look 
like you're wearing a muumuu and it's going to age you. It's also going sometimes, especially with people who are more mature, or if you're a very petite person, if you wear something that's shapeless and straight, a lot of times it can make you look heavier than you actually are. That's just how it goes. And it's embarrassing. It really is embarrassing. There's nothing else I can do, you know, you can do about that. That's just what it is. So I would stay with something that's more shaping, something that's going to shape your body more and give you more of a body. And that'll help you take away that aging look, that look that you might be a lot older than you are. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) So let's move from clothes real quick to maybe one or two more makeup things, or at least one more thing that I want to talk about that's in the makeup. Oh, and one skincare thing. So when applying skincare, upward, upward and outward motions are the motions that you want to use when you're doing this. This helps with the lifting effect. If you're putting on your skincare and doing your skincare from the center of your face outwards in a lifting motion, in an upwards motion, it's going to help with that lifting effect. And that will really help you in the long run. Even if you're young, you can do that too. Just don't pull too hard on your face. Never pull too hard on your face. It's not good for it. I do it all the time and I really shouldn't, but don't do it. (laughs) I don't recommend that to anybody, but this is a really good trick um, with skincare in general to give you that lifting effect. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is application products. I mean, it's the products that you use to apply your makeup and whatnot. If you are older, I would suggest using a sponge. You take sponge, put it under like a, like a beauty blender. You take the, the sponge, you put it under the sink, get the, get it filled with water and then wring it out as much as you can and use that to apply your makeup. That and your warm fingertips is good as well. These will really help you to not be like brushing at your face or, you know, what have you. But it also, it really helps with the application in itself, especially if you're blending outwards like you should be, like we talked about earlier. And that kind of helps blend, but also isn't rough on your face and helps with a less distribution of product. If you use a sponge and you put on too much product, this can really help in dispersing that product and giving you a little less product. So I definitely recommend it. I use a sponge for my foundation, sometimes for my primer if I feel like it. I use it for my highlighter and I use it for my concealer. Sometimes, if not, warm fingers do the tr- the trick. They do it just as well. Just make sure your hands are clean. That's something that you really should make sure when you're doing your makeup every time is that your hands are clean because you're putting your hands all over your face and that's nasty. Wash your hands. Like for real, wash your hands. (laughs) But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and a little bit about the skincare. I didn't really know if they would have fit too much in our earlier talks. But honestly, I just hope that you guys take these tips and maybe use them and it'll help you out. Maybe a little less on them them eyebrows. Maybe a little less on that foundation. Maybe, you know, check in your skin color and that kind of thing. I really just hope that these tips help you out a little bit. It doesn't... You don't have to follow every single one of these tips. You don't. It's just some food for thought that I'm giving you and some possible tips that you might be able to do in your everyday life or help somebody else out with in the future. You know, I just, I just want to help you. I just want to give you some tips and you do with them as you please. (laughs) For real though, I hope you guys enjoy this kind of thing. I'm hoping to be able to reach a very broad audience when it comes to this and many other things that I say. And I didn't want to single out one type of person with another type of person. I want to kind of bring it around to everybody. And I hope that this helped pretty much anybody, whether you are mature or you are very young. I just hope this kind of helps you out. And you know what? I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for listening to me. I want to talk to you guys. I want to know if 
you use any of these tips or if you have any other tips, tweet me at gsmc underscore beauty tips or get on the Facebook gsmc beauty tips. I'm there. I'm here to listen and communicate with you. I just want you guys to know that I'm here to communicate with you and you can come bug me on every social media. Come do it. Bug me. Poke and prod at me. Don't do that. That's terrible. But <laughs> but for real, hit me up on every social media. Tell me if you've used any of these, if you've heard of any of these, if you know of any that I actually didn't talk about. That would be great too. Helping everybody out in the comments or in the tweets or what have you. But seriously, I want to thank you so, so much for listening to the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. My name's Colleen, and I will see you in the next one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from health and wellness to entertainment and life and happiness to sex and relationships. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast.